What's up, nerds? Welcome to Nintendo Power Block for June 8th, 2018, episode 112. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Derrigan, alongside me, as always, is that retro code, Eddie V, Edward Varnell. <laughs> My most anticipated game is out now, and I'm so happy. Oh, gosh. I still don't, I still don't understand this game, man. I don't understand <laughs> it. I just, I just don't understand it. It's, uh, ah, magnificent. Ugh. Man. Hi everybody. The game Edward is talking about is Sushi Strikers. Uh yeah, it's out today. So Yay I haven't played it, I'm not gonna lie. Ah, because you've been playing something else. I've been playing a lot of games actually this week. <laughs> I've been putting off so much work and this is what happens when I put off work to the point where it's like <sighs> I have so much to do. Like I have to cut a trailer after we record. Because I haven't done it this week. <laughs> I actually have to cut like four more trailers, but like, like today is, or t- by the time you see this, the episode 100 of NGR Radio proper will be up. It's uh, the Corey Hype tra- trailers this week, which is me. And then next week's Matt. And then the live trailer, the Watch Episode 100 live will be next week. And then the on demand trailer will be the week after. So. Yeah. Yep, it's it's happening. It's, it's happening. It's it's happening. Plus, you know, all this E three stuff we gotta get ready for. Oh uh, dude, I'm I'm still like Saturday shoot. Probably Saturday or Sunday, like at the church, I literally gotta go get stuff. Like S- get my snack game ready. Sa- Saturday's E Sunday. Saturday is EA, right? They're the only right. conference that day, right? They're the only ones, yes. Okay. Because, like, Son and I were trying to figure out, like, we were going to go to dinner tomorrow uh, night, but, like, well, Friday night, if, we're, if we record on Thursdays, spoilers. Uh, I was, we were going to go out to dinner tomorrow night because it's, gonna it's like, our last kind of, like, anniversary without a kid, probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we were going to try to do something, uh, like, go out to eat and stuff. But then we were like, what if we go Saturday? But I was like, we'll eat three Saturday. <laughs> and our anniversary is on Friday, so um, we're still trying to figure that out. But uh, well, uh, due to something that's happening on Saturday, <laughs> I say go go ahead and and do it because like EA is like in the morning, and by the time you guys go out to dinner, all the news and stuff for EA will be done. Yeah, no, I just so. I would I would just like I would rather do it tomorrow to be honest because of, like. I don't want to like um when well, I are, when are, I ha- are when the I cast playing tomorrow I or Saturday. I think they're playing tomorrow and Sunday, but I mean tomorrow they're probably gonna lose. I mean they're down three zero. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen. I think I think they'll win tomorrow, uh, just because I don't think they want the Warriors to celebrate at home. But I think I think the Cavs will be done in five. To be honest, okay. But we'll see. You never know. You never know. Uh, but. Anyways, I, I want to go out to dinner on Friday because, like, I don't... When I have, like, a day off, I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know that feeling when you're like, let's just get everything done in one day. That way I can relax on my day off. Yeah. And not have to do anything. Uh, yeah. But, you know, whatever. We'll see. Uh, so well, I'm, well, only only I say that is because definitely with you getting off of work, and then have to turn around to get dressed and then go out to dinner. It's just like, well, I can understand not cooking. That that's the benefit of it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but either way, I I re- don't really care that much. I just uh. Yeah. Anyways, uh, but E three 
is this weekend. EA is Saturday. Bethesda and Microsoft and Devolver Digital are on Sunday. Monday is Sony, Ubisoft, and Square. And then Tuesday is is Nintendo. Nintendo. Uh, I do want to, like, I, I, I said this on NGR proper, but, like, next week, Arsenal X is probably going to post on Tuesday instead of Wednesday because Microsoft's conference is first, and mm-hmm. then Power Block will post on Wednesday next week because Nintendo's conference is on Tuesday. Right. And, 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 we're, and what we're... What? Oh, I, said, I was going to say there'll probably be some mini blocks or... Well, uh, or something. If there's like new announcements throughout Treehouse Live, yeah. Well, what I wanted, what it's probably not going to be like a a proper podcast. You know, mm. we're I we are going to do a bunch of mini blocks, right, to break down each of the games. Yes. Uh, what I want to do is like make all those separate videos that go up. Mm. But like after all the videos go up, I'm going to link all the audio together with like little interludes in between each one. Yeah, and then I'll have time. I'll pr- I'll try to have timestamps on all the different games. Like, we'll talk about Smash Brothers here and Pokemon here and Game X here and Game Y here. You know, like that kind of stuff. And then yeah. that'll just be like the audio show that week. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Friday or Thursday, whatever, we'll just have a proper podcast and kind of like talk about like a normal podcast, but like really break down E three and like not really talk about everything which mm-hmm. i'm sure we will talk about everything but like just kind of talk about the things that stuck out and like got us excited yeah yeah cuz i'm i'm right now even before the show starting i'm taking um doing a not with the announcements i'm writing everything down just be like yeah this was an at e3 but this is where in pre-e3 and things are getting to be confirmed because i didn't even like rage and uh fallout 76 um i would do more of the, i didn't put them on my notes for bethesda but i'll do them more once we get more details about them during bethesda's conference but like when sony released tetris effect and with uh, Persona Three and Persona Five getting having Desert Games coming out, like all of that stuff, I put in my E three notes for those uh, particular shows because now we're in actual P pre three, um, and then I'll do like EA and everything. So I'll have show notes for everybody for any shows that everybody want to have if they need them because I already already let Jason know that you know I'll have your guys stuff for uh, NGP. Um, once we go, once Sony start stop doing the day announcements and they have their conference, yeah. so yeah, and and when I can, I'll be taking notes too. Especially this weekend, I'll be taking notes, and then uh, the Nintendo stuff, I'll definitely be taking notes. I'm gonna yeah. try to at least listen to the conferences while I'm at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see how well the the internet works, and like, you know, I mean, I drive. I don't want to like sit there and watch it, but uh. You know, it's it's gonna be an interesting week because this is <laughs> since we started NGR, this is the first week we haven't like done E three together. <laughs> I mean, like, is... we, I mean, like the Nintendo stuff specifically. So, yeah, I mean that is true. I mean, but uh, t- Tuesday we'll cover a lot after we I get off work and we get together and like that'll just be like a night where we just kind of like literally everything. It doesn't matter if it's crappy, if it's awesome, if it's like. If if Nintendo announces a a Nintendo branded toothpaste, we're gonna talk about it on a mini block, you know. So right, because uh, it's yeah, because I, like for me, I'm probably gonna be going over trailers over and over again, like listening to announcements and watching the conferences. Because I'm like, I bet you it looks like there's something that I miss, and I just want to see it again, or something make me very excited. I just want to see it again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So. uh that's kind of our that's kind of our E three plans for right now, uh, you know we'll we'll keep you updated through the Facebook group and or both Facebook groups and the Facebook page and Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, I feel like this is I feel like this is going to be a big E three. Like I, I feel like it's going to I feel like we're going to see things that we're not expecting. I mean we always do, but I feel like those mm. things that we're not expecting are going to be big. Yes. So. Uh, but anyways, we'll save E3 for next week. I'm very excited. 
<laughs> I'm super excited. I mean, I know I sound tired right now because, like, oh, man, yesterday was such a long day. It was such a long day. Like, I worked over yesterday. Uh huh. And then we went straight from, from uh, I went straight from work, which I worked like seven to five thirty yesterday. Wow. <laughs> and then. <laughs> As soon as I got home, I, like, stuffed my face with what Sana cooked for dinner, which was amazing, by the way. It was, like, this it was like this uh, spicy sausage and, like, mac and cheese. Ooh, nice. Oh, it was so good. But, like, I, I wanted to enjoy it, but I couldn't because we had to leave, like, literally 20 minutes after I got home, and I had to change and everything, and we went to baby classes last night till like, we got home around 9.30, I want to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So at that point, I had been up for a while, and then I had to stay up and watch the Cavs. And while I was watching the Cavs, like, I was obsessed with N++, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, we, we rarely talked yesterday or anything, but it was just like, uh, when you said you had the baby class, it's like, well, yeah, of course that. Uh, yeah. And then I heard the Cavs games going on, and I was just like. <sighs> I always feel weird when, like. Because whenever, like, I don't talk to you or Jesse or Matt at least, like, once a day, I'm just like, something's wrong here. Something's off. <laughs> you know, because, like, I message you guys at least, like, try to at least, like, once a day. And then if nobody answers, I'm like, okay. But if somebody answers, then we spark up a conversation. And then sometimes I fade away because I'm eating dinner or, like, playing M++ this week. <laughs> but, uh, oh, my gosh, dude, that game's so amazing. I'm going to talk about it right now. I have, let's see. I gotta turn. I want to see. I need to see something real quick. Yes, uh, there, right. This segment, we're now finally getting into what we've. Been yeah, playing. what we. What, yeah, <laughs> what we've. What we've been playing. Uh, uh, M plus plus. It doesn't. Man, I've only had it for five days, so I don't know how long I've been playing. It's been a. It's been a long time. I've been playing a long time. Uh, ever since I got it, actually, it's the only game I've been playing. Uh, on Switch, I have been playing other games. And you're going to get mad at me when I tell you what that other game is. But it's okay. No. Uh, uh, dude, N++ is so good. It is so good. Yes. Uh, the tight platform is just... Uh. Uh, it's so good. And it has that like quick Super Meat Boy. Like, I, wanna, I just need to try one more time and I'll get it. Yeah. Like, I'm, stuck yeah. on a, I'm stuck on a level right now where, uh-huh. it's, where it's like that. It's like, oh, I, I can get it if I just try one more time. Like, if I just, yeah. if I just try one more time, I'm going to get it. We were talking about that in the chat today. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it just has that. Usually I say it has that appeal, but for this game, it has that attachment. It's just yeah. like, I can do it. If I just. And you. It makes you feel. Feel like you just want to play with physics in mm-hmm. a sense. Be like, if I just balance the timing of my floatiness or my jump, if I do it at this angle, come down. Like, you get like very mathematical about it. Oh, yeah. In a sense. Yeah, there's this one that, oh my gosh, last night I was working on probably for like uh, literally just one stage for like an hour while I was watching the Cavs. And it was, it was like, it was, it was like these two kind of tall pillars that you had to like jump up. Well, uh, like the first one, you jump up, you automatically hit the switch for the door. So yeah. there's about the size of the ninja space between the door and a bomb, but you can't jump in the door yet because on the other side of the door, which you can't jump across because the physics won't let you, you have yeah. to hit that spot between the door and <laughs> the bomb, and then jump over to get the things. And so, like, I'm, I'm, like, I was getting that down right. And then you, you start memorizing how to do it, right? And so, yeah. like, I jumped over the door, and I would get to the other side, but instead of, like, one bomb on that wall, there's three bombs. And you have to get in, like, there's not enough running space for you to get momentum to jump. So, like, you have to, like, figure out how to do, like, the wall jump to get momentum to start running again and do the wall jump again. And you have to, like like, wind up your ninja momentum almost and then you have to like jump like in between the like the the, there's like four spaces you can jump you have to jump into the second space up into the fourth space and then up around that last bomb into the door and like your momentum just can't carry you like that unless you have like the right amount of momentum and it it took so long it took me almost an hour (sighs) Man. That, was, that precision <laughs> i know it's no joke i know it's no joke man it is no joke but it, it oh my gosh but after i beat that level i felt so good 
and like Sana was sleeping next to me and I audibly yelled how excited I was and like I heard her make a noise like I was being too loud. <laughs> uh, it was so good, man. Oh, it was so good. I love this game so much. Like it's gonna be the game that I play just nonstop forever until like maybe Fire Emblem. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and we don't even know when that's coming out yet. <laughs> so uh but man, N plus plus is so good. It's fourteen ninety nine. If you like hard as balls platform like two D platformers, like to be fair, like the game is not hard. The thing that makes it hard is collecting all the gold pieces in each level. Yes. Like that's what makes the game hard. And I and I really don't know what the payoff is yet. There isn't any working those coins. There isn't any. It just, it's just the half. The coins the coins increase your timer. Right, uh-huh. so like that's that's the that's the incentive to get them. So like you can expand your time to figure out the level, but like your time carries over for that set of levels. So like each each like section has five levels in it, uh-huh. and like you want to collect the coins because it extends your timer. But it's not necess- you can beat all of them if you know what you're doing with the time that is allotted. Right. Right. The, the incentive to collect the coins is to extend your timer. There's no, in, there's nothing else. There is literally no other incentive. I, I got all the achievements in, in plus on Xbox 360. There is no incentive to collect all the gold coins except for the simple fact that if you get all the gold coins in one level, a little yellow square goes in the corner of the levels that you've completed where you've collected all the gold coins. Wow! And once you ha- like, it's that obsessive compulsive thing where like, well, if that one square doesn't have the go- the gold square that notifies me that I've completed everything in that level, I gotta go do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but what I've been doing is like kind of I've been playing through the levels, and if it looks like it's easy enough to collect all the gold coins, I'll do it right away. But like, I like to play through the level a couple times to get used to it. Yeah. So. It's so good though, man. Fourteen ninety nine. Everybody, please buy this game. I want a third one, even though I've only completed a hundred of the uh, <laughs> four thousand three hundred and sixty levels. <laughs> like I'm, Best. I'm not even through like the quote unquote intro slash tutorial levels, and I've probably okay. been play- I've been playing for like five hours. I think. <laughs> oh, it's so, I can't but put it down. It's so that's- good. That's worth the purchase. Well, I know. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, plus, like, they added all the legacy levels in. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, we've said that before, but, like, it's, like, first there's, like, solo play, right? And that's just, like, normal mode. Yes. And then inside solo play, there's intro, N++, uh, hard, and then Legacy, which is, like, the old levels. And then, after you complete Solo, you unlock Hardcore, which is, like, I think it's, like, a lot of the same levels, but with, like, like extra obstacles. So, like, it makes the levels harder. And, like, there's le- there's more gold coins in each level, so, like... And people are sadistic enough to do that uh-huh hmm. Hmm. i'm gonna try <laughs> yes everybody this is why i love my boss <laughs> uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna try i'm not gonna lie uh but anyways the the other game i played this week uh i jumped back into destiny 2 because i wanted to see what all the stuff the stuff was like and uh i started leveling up my character on xbox uh, mm-hmm. but it feels different than i remember like it feels a little bit faster it feels a lot like uh i don't i mean we did play it the D- recently but the D- like what the dlc or just the whole game in in total like like did they do an update for the whole game uh-huh yeah there's there's been an update and like i it feels a lot like the speed of halo 4 does actually uh that's Ooh. that's what it feels like i'm about to install i'm about to reinstall it then uh and go from there. I think Sana's picking up on the microphone. <laughs> I can hear her. 
Uh, but yeah, I've been I've been playing a little bit of Destiny too, and I think I'm gonna keep playing a little bit. I want to at least get through the expansions. Uh, some of my friends from my old job started playing again, and I was like, oh, I'll play with you guys. So, but they they don't play nearly as like hardcore as my my old raid team, like nowhere close. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's kind of all I've really been playing besides what we played for squad goals last weekend. But anyways, what have you been playing, Ed? Uh, so uh, I've been playing M plus plus along with Corey. Yes. Uh, get so get us some of, of that game. So uh, that of game you. is just like uh, the the tightness. You guys just don't know the tightness a good platform, and it gives. Only reason why I say that it gives me the Super Mario Brothers one effect, where you're running and you're jumping, but there's the caution that you you might doubt your jump, so you turn around so you can go back sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that's what M++ kind of feels to me. It's just like, uh, uh, no, no, let me go back. And I don't, I don't know why it does it to me, because I want to get it just right. And even though I know I'm going to mess up, or if it's wrong, just be like, ah, let me try it again. I know I could do it. I know I was right. So, uh, yeah. I, 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 ju- I judge myself. <laughs> I sometimes I question it, judge it, but I I do end up loving it. Um, getting back into Breath of the Wild, I'm like I'm really determined now to like literally beat this game on Switch. Yes, can you please beat uh, it, please? Can you can you hurry up and beat it? Thanks. <laughs> it's only been out for a year and a half. Let's go. Okay. Hey, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that really is true. <laughs> I mean, um, I know you started playing it on Wii U, but no excuses. Chop chop. <laughs> that, that is true. I get stuck in the world, dude. I I literally just I, I turn it on, just be like, goodness gracious! I I could just sometimes don't want to do nothing and just look at the game, and just be like, Ugh. I do. It was so it's so bad that I went back and watched people's reactions at the first trailer that they did, like the Wii U reveal, uh, of the when the game was actually in motion. Oh my gosh, so that's that like first trailer. That first trailer they show off, or like, not the first trailer, but the yeah. first like when they were at the Game Awards and they showed that picture like the, of Onuma and Miyamoto playing on the Wii U, like that gameplay looks so different from what the game actually turned out to be that it's like, man, I can't. It, uh, just like the things that they do, man, to make the game perfect is just like, ooh. So yes. So oh. um. For PS4, uh, I'm not so much for Xbox. Uh, for PS4, only play, and this is the last game I actually play. Uh, I started up the Talos Principle. Um, it's a puzzle game, uh, kind of in a form of portal in a sense, but you don't use, you don't actually go through portals. You use like different uh, technology to um, sort to solve it. Like you'll use like a camera that could freeze, uh, like unlock shield doors and freeze like uh, bombs and machine guns and stuff, so you could walk through. Cause like, like there really is no combat in it. Um, so getting through that, and the puzzles that you get are Tetris style puzzles. So when you when you get those puzzle pieces, you uh, you unlock something um, in the world that you're in. So you're you're doing your in uh, environment to do these puzzles to get these pieces, and then you come out that environment and you go to like a hub world and then unlock something in the game. Um, but just those two are the only ones that I've been playing. In. I mean, those three games and more just shapes shapes and beats I've been playing. So, um, we haven't touched my Xbox One in a bit because I'm just trying to, you know, make sure that I do a good rotation of games that I play. Um, but, like, like really, it's just State of Decay 2. But um, after hearing you talking about Destiny, um, I'm probably going to install it back on my Xbox One to give it a go. I mean, I finished the game, but I want to finish. I probably will make a new character and see how the world goes with that. I mean, I... I mean, I know we're probably going to talk about it a little bit on Arsenal X a little bit maybe next week, but, like, all that new stuff they're talking about for Destiny 2 looks really cool. 
Did they do they have any video of it, or yeah, did they just up. only? It's up. There's a there's a ten minute reveal, uh, Vidoc, and then there was mm. an hour and a half stream of them talking about it afterwards. Uh, it's on Bungie's YouTube page, I think. Okay, because because I see the news reports, but in those news news reports, I didn't see no video for it, so I couldn't tell if there was if they released any actual gameplay of what was coming, of of, of what they did or anything. So I have to go back and check it out, yeah, because I kind of want to see what you guys think about it. I'm on the fence of it, um, probably because I just need to still collect some of the information mm. and just trying to see from what Destiny 2 was, what I played before, mm. to what it is now. Yeah, I mean, and I, think, I mean, I don't really want to talk about it too much on, on here because it's obviously not coming mm. to Switch, but, like, I do like the changes that, like, you can now put any weapon in any slot. Oh, who would have thought that you can? If you want to use three shotguns, you can use three shotguns. Whoa, crazy! Uh, but you have to pay attention to what weapon you're using. Yeah. Uh, like if you're still using, if you're using like two kinetic weapons, you got to make sure to pick up kinetic ammo because it's uh, you know. They use you have to be careful of the ammo types. The ammo types are staying the same. You can just still use the weapons in the different slots. They're adding nine new supers, which is they are talking about like they want the game to feel broken because that's when the game is at its best. And they're taking away they're doing away with a lot of things that make like that people like think are bad about the game, like I don't know, s- story. <laughs> and they're they're gonna do more of like Tell, telling story through the world instead of like trying to create a cutscene around like specific events in the game. I, th- I think the story wasn't bad. I think they should have just added. Like to me, I thought the story was good. It was easy to comprehend. Mm-hmm. I just think that they should have added a better side quest on how on how to do it. You know, with, within the world that you was fighting in. Yeah, um, I mean, it, I, think, I mean, it seems. Oh, go ahead, Corey. Oh, I just they they're incorporating a lot of new stuff into the mission structure, mm-hmm. and like I, I was trying to tell you that they're doing exactly that of like trying to make it easier. Like, it was easy to find like adventures and public events and stuff on the map, and like yeah. current objectives and stuff, but like they didn't really feel rewarding, and like the ones that were more rewarding, you couldn't tell which ones were rewarding and which ones weren't. And, like, if it was worth doing something. And they're, they're trying to fix all that to make sure that everybody feels rewarded after they do something instead of just, like, tokens and stuff. Uh, but they're going to reveal more E3, I guess, at Behind Closed Doors stuff. Uh, and uh, the new raid looks cool. They're adding two new areas that you can explore, finally. Uh, so it looks cool. But we'll talk about it later on, on Arsenal X. Uh, I actually wanted yeah. to talk about it earlier this week, but n- nobody's as into Destiny as I am, so it's like it's <laughs> well, kind of hard to talk I, I, about like the major changes when people don't really know what those changes are. <laughs> well, I I think well definitely for me it is, uh, and I know we're gonna get into news bits for that. Uh, I think for me was that when I was done with Destiny Two, I put it away, and my interest party just party fell away from that. And maybe some other the stories that they what they tried to improve still felt broken. So yeah, uh, but this seems interesting, and you know I always I'm always up to hopping back into it, give it an, uh give it a go and see what the changes are. So yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, if that speed feels like Halo Five, dude, I'm st- that's a big improvement to me. No, Halo Four, not Halo Five. Oh dang. Yeah, it it feels a lot like Halo Four. Uh, oh. I I like how it feels. I think uh, it's a little bit faster. It seems like they fixed a, like the time to kill in multiplayer is a little mm-hmm. bit better. Like it doesn't it it doesn't feel that drastic, but it's enough to like okay, they're kind of headed in the right direction. And so, uh, but anyways, sorry that was our yeah. Destiny five ish minutes. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of excited to get back into it though. So. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reinstall it for Xbox One and give it a go. So okay, we are going to get into the news bits here on Yay. Nintendo Power Block. Uh, 
where was where, I was gonna start with one and I I gotta find the right tab. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, here it is. This okay. comes from this comes from Nintendo today. Uh, Square Enix sets up new division to make games specifically for Switch. Uh, one of the biggest Japanese developers, Square Enix, has confirmed that they are working on several Switch games, and they have set up a new division to lead the way on those projects. Square Enix's Tomoya Asano told Game Informer that they are working on several titles for Switch, adding, we'll work with Nintendo and announce them in the future. Uh, the one Square Enix title that has been announced is Octopath Traveler, which they will use as an indicator whether to invest more into Switch. Uh, if Octopath Traveler does well, and this is something that appeals to fans, we want to focus on Switch. Please pick up the Switch if you want to play games like Octopath Traveler. So, that's cool. Well, we knew that they were focusing on Switch. Um, I think this just uh, certi- certifies it. Because they, they did say like earlier in the year that we our plans are um, to put games on Switch. I think there just wasn't an uh, actual development team doing that and uh, actual plans to roll out. Um, I think Project Octopath or Octopath Traveler, I keep saying Project Octopath. I think Octopath Traveler, hopefully it hits a million in sales. I um, think it will. I think that game is right up people's alley for Switch. Like the, the, I, I, I cannot the see that game not doing too well. too good. Yeah, the feedback and the download, the demo downloads were too good, so people still have interest in this game. Yeah, you know, it, I said it's a day one purchase for me. I played that demo and I was just like, oh yeah, I'm probably gonna be spending hours with this game. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely one of, gonna be one of those games that I think is going like based on the art style alone, is going mm-hmm. to uh, appeal to a mass audience like. I think a lot of people who grew up playing Super Nintendo are going to look at this and be like, hey, this looks like those games I used to play, like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy and uh, Secret of Mana. So, like, I'll pick it up and see what it's all about. Plus, like, people who are big fans of 3DS probably played Bravely Default at some point, and it's that team. Yes. So, uh, it's going to be cool. Very, very, also- very interested in, in seeing how well that game does. It comes out on July 13th, the same day as Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, so... Ah, uh, yes. Whew. Yeah. Hopefully I have my job by then and my money saved up so I can <laughs> go, go to Target and be like, I want the Captain Toad and I want the, uh, <laughs> um, the Traveler. <sighs> yeah. Um, okay. Are you ready for this? Remember the leaked document we saw last week of all the games coming to Switch, including Paladins? Mm Mm-hmm. This comes from Nintendo Life. Paladins has been confirmed for Nintendo Switch and launches next week. 60 60 frames per second gameplay with cross-platform play. Uh, It's official. Paladins has its very own page on the eShop. It it will be bringing 60 frames a second action along with cross-platform multiplayer when it hits Switch on June 12th, the same day as Nintendo's E3 showcase. Uh, The original story says uh, the free-to-play title Paladins has just been confirmed. Uh, Seen by many as a clone of the popular hero shooter Overwatch, Paladins hit 17 million downloads on Steam late last year. Uh, It's already available on PS4 and Xbox One. So, uh, I mean, if we're not getting Overwatch, this seems like a decent kind of substitute i guess if you're into that or you can just play overwatch but uh it's cool it's cool that this game's coming because like people have been talking about this game for a while now and it seems to be pretty a pretty solid hero shooter from what i hear so yeah, and nintendo of america like they announced it on their twitter page with the video and everything so yeah you know it just it makes me mad man because this game is like a lot more graphically intensive than overwatch and we're not we can't get overwatch on here like come on man that that's blizzard uh, come I, on, man. I think i think what's going to happen is is that blizzard is going to probably look that look at people uh picking up this game or they're, they're going to watch the downloads or something i think they're going to pay attention yeah i, I th- think they'll make a decision after that i think that i think they're going to pay attention to this too because that crazy uh crazy justice game 
mm-hmm. which is like the light hero shooter mixed with battle royale, whatever, is also coming to Switch at some point with crossplay. And like these two games, I think someone like Blizzard would be very wise to pay attention to. Not that like they're ever going to outdo Blizzard because Blizzard's so big, but like they're going to want a piece of that pie. And I think people will want to play Overwatch just like, you know, it. If and when Fortnite ever comes to the Switch, like that's gonna kill anything that Crazy Justice had going for it, because like, you know, it was gonna be the only kind of battle royale esque game on the Switch, but now it's gonna have to compete with Fortnite and Paladin. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, we'll see how the games run. I mean, it's, it's free to play, play, so I'll try it out. But oh yeah, I will too. Uh Anyways. I mean, and a it's crossplay, so I mean that's a that's a really good benefit. That's, like me, that's we, big, right? And we talked about you know Nintendo, and Microsoft working together, mm-hmm. and the company's doing it. Did, yeah. Did you see that? Not that this is like, ooh, Dead Cells Switch is uh, available for pre order on Amazon. Oh, they out. just. Uh, I wonder if they just opened it up because uh, Best Buy had the first pre-orders. Yeah. So I'm assuming they, they just opened it up. They must have. But anyways, I've just clicked on my Amazon link to see what was happening. Uh, nice. Any, anyways, also coming from Nintendo Life, Max Bomber is coming to Super Bomberman R as a Switch exclusive character. Uh, rival Systems also getting original characters and voice actors. Uh, Konami has announced that several new additions to Super Bomber Ban- Super Bomberman R, one of which is a character uh, edition coming exclusively to Nintendo Switch. Uh, as you can see from the brand spanking new trailer above, Max Bomber is coming to the uh, coming to the game on Switch thanks to popular demand, which allowing fans to ruthlessly, ruthlessly fight enemies with his iconic electric bombs. Max will be joining the other chaos the joining the others in chaos soon, with more details surrounding his arrival expected in the near future. Uh, the company also revealed the original voice actors of Ratchet and Clank and Master Chief, uh, which will be appearing in the PS4 and Xbox One versions of their games, respectively. Uh, so, cool. I, did you see the Master Chief character model? Uh-uh, no. Oh, he looks cool. Master Chief looks cool. Uh, and then, I guess, I, I didn't see the Ratchet one, but... I mean, I can't believe they're still supporting this game. It's like a year and a half later. Is this game? Wow. This game is like, how, this game is a year and a half old. How are they still supporting? How's Konami of all people supporting a Bomberman game a year and a half later? Because the because the sales were too good. Yeah, yeah. I I agree. I just it's just funny because it's 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 Konami and. I mean, it's not really Konami, but it's Konami. I mean, I mean, think about it. That Bomberman R, I assume, did better than Metal Gear Survive. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it did. <laughs> I'm almost positive it did. <laughs> which, so. which, which is why everybody's concerned about Konami now. Just like y'all gotta announce something for E3. <laughs> y'all gotta give us something. Yeah, yeah. So it's cool though that that game's still getting supported. I'm cl- I'm glad it is. So uh, moving on to our next story, this comes from Way of Game Informer. Uh, oh, whoops! I read that one already. Uh, Pokemon Go's Water Festival once again emerges from the depths. Pokemon Go- Pokemon Go's annual Water Festival event returns. Uh, well, Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. During the event, players will encounter water-type Pokemon more frequently and can complete field research tasks focused on water types. Players can also earn three times uh, three times the amount of Stardust for catching water Pokemon and earn double candy and Stardust for hatching eggs. Water Pokemon will appear more frequently in raid battles, including the return of legendary Pokemon, Kyrogre. I said that right, right? Yep. Uh, I, I think so. Ed, just say yes. Yes. Tell me it was the perfect pronunciation. <laughs> it was the perfect pronunciation. Thanks, Ed. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> if successfully defeated, there's a chance players will encounter Cairo Grease shiny form. 
Shelter receives a shiny form starting with this event as well. Uh, the Water Festival event runs from uh, June 7th, which is you know today through June 21st. That's my mom's birthday. Um, oh, yay. I'm sure my mom won't be catching any water type Pokemon for her birthday. Uh, that's cool. Pokemon goes big, and I'm sure it's gonna get even. It's gonna get that extra boost with people playing it now that you can transfer your Pokemon to Let's Go. Uh, so, yay, cool, sweet. Uh, are you gonna be playing Pokemon Go anytime soon, Ed? <laughs> not on my phone. No. Yeah, I just I don't. Not gonna lie, I'm not. I don't care. <laughs> I'll pick up Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee. I'll pick those games up on Switch. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely pick those up. But I'm just like, I just don't. I don't care. I'm sorry. I just don't. Uh, More evidence has been discovered. (laughs) Uh, This comes from IGN. Uh, Fortnite update file and logo have been spotted uploaded to the Switch eShop. Is the Battle Bus really headed to the hybrid consoles way? Uh, Fortnite's logo and update file for the game have been discovered on the Switch eShop. Twitter user SkyersM un- uh, uncovered the Fortnite details on the eShop, which, side note, was updated recently to enhance game discovery. <laughs> Fortnite hasn't officially been announced for Switch, though there's a been speculation it will be revealed uh, at E3 this coming week. Uh... The, la- the latest tidbit comes hot off the heels of the alleged leak E3 document listing Fortnite among a number of other un- unannounced games and a sighting of the game uh, on the Koreans ratings board website, which we talked about uh, last week. Uh, yep. The application for the rating was approved on May 31st. Uh, Nintendo's E3 showcase will take place on Tuesday, June 12th at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern uh, will focus on games launching later this year, including Super Smash Brothers. So, I think it's safe. I, I think it's safe to say that this game's coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think the bad thing about this is that um, it, it's lost all this excitement for it. Like, I think people just like, "Yay, yeah, Fortnite's coming!" Cool. I don't. I don't think it's lost excitement. I just think like. It's just another pl- place to play the game. It's like the Minecraft thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's literally everywhere. This is just another place for people to play it, which, honestly, primary wor- primarily where I'm probably going to play it now, uh, to be honest, just because, like, things are happening. <laughs> uh, but, I don't know. What I, what, I, I, what I would like to do, honestly, mm-hmm. with this, if this does come to Switch, like, soon, or, like, imminently, like... I would like to do a Royale with Cheese and see if we can all get into the same squad, like crossplay. I want to see if there's a way to do that because yeah. I, I want to I want to test out the crossplay stuff and see if it like we can get into the same squad if we can like play together. Like I I I would really really like to try to do that just to show people how to do it. Yeah. We'll we'll see. Well, I, I mean, we'll see. It's it's obviously going to take some work, and we don't, technically we don't even know if this game's coming to Switch yet. But when it does, look for that Royale with cheese. Yes. Every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on youtubecom slash radio and NGRadio.com. Like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> uh, uh but yeah, that's pro- honestly that's probably most likely where I'll be playing <laughs> that game is on <laughs> Switch. I think I like that game a lot, but I wish there was a way I could play it in handheld mode, <laughs> and now, now it seems like I can. This this last uh, big news story comes from uh, Game Informer. The Pokemon Company is talking up 2019 Switch game. Uh, the CEO of the Pokemon Company, Tetsunakazu. <laughs> Ishihara. <laughs> Shut up. I hate you so much. <laughs> has not Go ahead, boss. has not only been talking about this year's Pokemon Let's Go games, but also peppering in details about next year's Switch game as well. In an interview with Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu translated by Silicon Era, 
Uh, Ishihara assures fans put off by some of Pokemon Let's Go's changes uh, that the next title will be completely different. We want to make Pokemon fans say, this is what I've been waiting for, by delivering a brand new product packed with gameplay elements and plenty of new Pokemon to encounter. Uh, the game will give a good understanding of what an evolved Pokemon game looks like after it has continued to succeed uh, and after it has continued to succeed the traditions of Game Freak. Pokemon's Let's Go was revealed at the end of May, delighting a lot of fans, but focusing more on Pokemon Go style mechanics. Uh, Game Freak and the Pokemon Company have tried to assure trainers that next year's game will be more of a traditional experience for fans of the series. Cool. Yeah. I butchered his name, I'm sorry. Uh, it happens. I'm a white American, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh. It happens. Uh, let me ask you something. This has nothing to do with Pokemon, but I want to ask you something. Have you ever heard the term straw? S C R A W? Like a straw, like like you drink out of a cup with. Yes. No, but have you have, oh. have you like not have you ever heard of a straw, but have you ever heard somebody call someone a straw? Uh, no. Like, what is it supposed to be insulting? That you thin? That you're long? No, that I'm straight and white. I'm like, I never... Somebody called me that the other day. I'm like, first of all, I I don't have any issues with anybody about any of their life choices. So why are you calling me that? <laughs> Why you just can't say, "Oh, you're a straight white man"? Why you gotta like? Is, like the, is that hard? I think it was like what I, you need the what I you think need it the end for. I think it was. I think it was supposed to be an insult, but I I don't know because I've never heard that term before. I've never heard of that term before. I'm just like, wait, you're doing the most just to call somebody. I guess the uh, in not so much an insult, but something that that person already knows. Okay. What what you have to put the and white for? He knows that the the person knows that they're white. Yeah, I'm just like, that's a that's a new insult I've never heard before. I'm like, like sometimes sometimes straws are clear. They're not all white. What if you get them crazy right. straws that bend? Sometimes they're colorful to appease kids. Like, what are you trying to do here? I don't get it. Someone was trying to make a word that's popular and it failed on so many levels. Yeah, I think so. I think I think you're right. But anyways, it's, that just kind of remind. I don't somehow. I just remembered somebody called me that the other day, and I was like, I don't even know what that means. Like, like even I'm puzzled. I'm like, like wait, huh? <laughs> I'm like, thanks. Question mark. Um. Uh, anyways, back to Pokemon. Are you excited for a new traditional Pokemon, Ed? Of course, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I think like I've been telling myself that let's go. And these games are going to be the ones that like kind of get me back into it. Mm -hmm. So, so I'll be ready for the new one next year. Yes. So, and since Which my, I think and since my Switch is going to be getting a lot more handheld mode time <laughs> in the next like. <laughs> forever <laughs> uh, no just for a little bit uh, yeah so i don't know i i i'm excited but every time they add more monsters i'm like that collector in me is like this is gonna take forever to find them all <laughs> you know i already gonna be like messaging you be like cory <laughs> do you got this fuck man to a side change room because i need it yeah i i look and that's and that's gonna probably be the thing where uh where uh the next or the traditional Pokemon is just like okay let me find out which version Corey has because I'll probably then once again I'll probably buy both versions but I'm like let me find out what Corey has so I can get the opposite version yeah so in case we message each other bam yeah yeah so I don't know it I. I'm excited to see what it is. Um, I'm glad that it's more traditional than than normal, but yeah. 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 Um well Ed, that's that seems to be about all of the uh 
quote unquote big news uh, this week. Like I said, next week is like the big one. It's gonna be next week's shows are gonna be so big, like they're just gonna be huge. I think some people might even join us on on some of the shows. Uh-huh. Uh, some of the like the some of the, all the shows next week are gonna be all messed up. They're gonna be all just not on the schedule, right? It's E three week, like you know, Nerds Gone Platinum is gonna publish their show right away, and their conference is on Monday. So their show will probably mm. be up Tuesday. Arsenal X will probably be up on Monday. Like all the shows are just going to be whacked out, except for NGR proper, right? So, right. Man, there's <laughs> there's so much going on next week. I cannot wait. Uh, oh, by the way, this this also comes from uh, Nintendo Life. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker's file size is 1.4 gigs. Uh, for those also, who confer uh, <laughs> uh, right. SD card real estate. <laughs> Uh, also, everybody, Titan Quest has been announced for Switch, and it will be out next month. I think yep. July 31st. Yep. Uh, oh, that reminds me, Ed. I need to download the world's greatest game right now for free. I just... I what gotta, I gotta, what, can, I gotta what find game it. can that be? I just gotta find it. Um, oh, you know, Ed, the greatest game ever made. Hold on. I gotta find it. I gotta find it. I have to find it. Oh, why? It, I found it. And this this might be something that we'll return to, but not on Power Block. Probably just maybe you guys will probably talk on NGR or just a discussion about this. Um, Steam has kind of like Yes, everybody, that is Shaq Fu. The greatest game, game ever is, made. I can't believe that game is $40. It's, like, it's no. 19, it's $19.99. It's $40 for the physical version. Oh. <laughs> Nobody's buying the physical version. <laughs> it added that target. I'm the like, only reason why I got this one is because it was free. <laughs> free, exactly. Because I bought that stupid basketball game last year. <laughs> And not and it, not it, got it. not NBA 2K, but the uh, the the one that was trying to be NBA Jam. I forget what it's called. Playgrounds. Now. Yeah, playgrounds. So NBA playgrounds. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, like Steam. I uh, goodness, I think they just about destroy about to destroy themselves. With their new policy, and hopefully. Nintendo. Hopefully, companies take a look at what Steam is about to do and never incorporate what they're about to do. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even care about Steam. Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to know what next week is happening. Next week, I want to know what it's. I want to know. We would know it. We would know starting Saturday. And we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, anyways, this has been Nintendo Power Block, episode 112 for June 8th, 2018. Remember to tune in next week. Uh, Like I said, Ed and I and various other members of NGR will be watching the E3 press conferences, except for EA, because let's be honest, it's going to be Battlefield, Anthem. Well, I'll probably have something small on Anthem, uh, but... I mean, maybe we'll talk about it and on... Uh, there's a possibility of Skate 4 coming. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Sunday night, maybe we can cover it a little bit as a... Mm. We need we need an Xbox equivalent to Mini Block. Because mm. I feel like there's a lot of Xbox stuff that happens that's, like, newsworthy, but not enough to, like make it a huge topic on a podcast, you know? We'll we talk will. after the show. I think we will. We'll talk we'll, after the yeah. show. We'll, ta- we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll uh, brainstorm. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, remember to subscribe to the podcast on your podcast service of choice and subscribe to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash NGR radio. Check out Expansion Pack every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, check out our mini blocks, check out our Let's Play shows, check out our family of podcasts, including Nerds Gone Platinum, Arsenal X, Nerds Gone Rogue, and the like. Uh, 
yeah, I think I think that's it. Join our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash NG or slash <laughs> slash Nintendo Power Block. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at NGR Power Block. And check us out on our website at NGRradio.com. Ed, where can we find you? And there's the bad you guys, connection bar right across. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at that Retro Code. You guys can check up Optional Opinion at SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and uh, tune in. I will also be doing Optional Opinion E3 breakdowns of um, all these shows. Um, so if you guys follow me on Twitter or you, uh, you check me out on Facebook, um, you guys will be able to get those episodes too. Um, I'm going to be trying to do a breakdown of, of those shows. Also, everybody, um, June 23rd is the debut of our Nindies Showcase. So please tune in. Hopefully you got your uh, Switch with you and you're ready to play some great Nindie games. And if you don't know what these games are, we'll show you why they are some uh, some great titles to have. So, yeah. Yeah. Check check us out. Yeah. Yeah. We're also prepping uh, season three of Pod and Play, which you can catch it starting September first. Uh, but yeah, you can find me at Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram, and you can also find me on various other content here on YouTube.com/slash NGR Radio. Like, subscribe, and share. Leave a comment. Email us at Nintendo Power Block at gmail.com. We're gonna have a big question block episode soon, probably right after E3. So, uh, yes, not right after E3, but that week after when all the news has settled, all of the uh, things are slowed down. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and enjoy your E3 weekend, and we will see you with a bunch of content next week. Bye, everybody. E3!